Good afternoon, everyone. This is Simon Volta, the Director of Sales here at V Technologies. Thank you for taking some time this afternoon to um, review uh, our QuickBooks and Starship integration. More importantly, our follow-up from our QuickBooks Connect show uh, that we attended last week in San Jose, uh, and also to review some holiday readiness as well as our new Starship updates in our latest version 18.1. Before I do get started this afternoon, a couple of housekeeping tips. If you do have questions, I will make sure to leave some time at the end of the presentation and demo uh, for questions. So if you do have a question, just please raise your hand, type in your question next to your name, and I'll be able to address any questions you may have. Uh, everyone will be in mute status, uh, so uh, we can get through the presentation this afternoon, and I'll try to keep it to 30 minutes uh, if possible here, uh, not to take up too much time. So without further ado, I'm going to jump right into the presentation, and then we'll get into the demo. So uh, before I get started, a quick agenda. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, who we are, for those of you new to V-Technologies or Starship altogether. I'll talk a little bit about uh, the differences for those of you who might be on the call that are using Shipgear today, what you can see inside of Starship. Uh, we'll go into some of the holiday readiness, some of the key facts around this time of year with the holidays approaching. Uh, what you can expect uh, and how we can maybe improve upon what you might be doing as well. Uh, and then obviously some of the advantages of maybe taking advantage of the uh, post office module that we do include uh, at no additional cost on your license and what the benefits are to using them. And then uh, we'll talk a little bit about our 18.1 release that just came out about a week or so ago uh, and a couple of new features uh, that's included in that. Uh, one being our Worldwide Express integration now that we offer a new, our latest 3PL uh, that we brought on board. And then we'll get into the demo and some Q&A. So for those of you new to V Technologies, we've been around since 1989, uh, basically 29 years approaching here. Uh, we have about 16 years in the QuickBooks space, uh, and we have about 10,000 customers across the platform uh, in different ERP spaces but use, utilizing Starship in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, FedEx and UPS both offer subsidy programs uh, that you might be familiar with, so I would encourage you to check with your account representatives uh, to see if you qualify for any subsidy to help pay for a solution like Starship. Uh, and we are considered to be a gold developer in the QuickBooks space as well. So a couple of the key features that you're going to see different if you're using Shipgear today versus Starship. So Starship is really its own user interface. It's a multi-carrier, multi-mode platform. Uh, you're not going to have to use WorldShip any longer. You're not going to have to use Ship Manager any longer. Um, you'll take all of those carriers into one platform, uh, be able to uh, maintain everything inside of there, utilize your own rates um, for those carriers. Uh, and we also support about two dozen different LTL integrations. So if you're doing LTL as well, uh, we can incorporate those carriers uh, in your rates that you're utilizing with those. We support line item integration with Starship. So with uh, Starship, you'll be able to pull all your uh, line items from your sales order, your sales invoice, uh, and basically be able to pack those items as you see uh, fit uh, versus ship gears, kind of header level information only with no line items appearing. Um, Third-party applications are supported, so if you're looking to maybe getting an inventory management software one day, like a Fishbowl or an Activate, uh, in conjunction with QuickBooks, we do support that as well in Starship, so we have integrations for uh, both of those platforms that we can utilize. Uh, rate shopping is, is available inside of Starship as well, so you're able to see the least expensive carrier for a shipment. You're also able to see the quickest delivery time for a particular shipment. Um, so make your choice wisely. Uh, batch processing we also offer in Starship, so you can process multiple orders at once. So if you're shipping a lot of e-commerce orders or just a lot of orders in general, uh, and they're ready for the warehouse to you know, basically ship, uh, they can e utilize um, our lookup window uh, and basically choose as many as they like to process at once. We also support EDI uh, functionality in Starship, so if you're using uh, applications like True Commerce, SPS Commerce, uh, and in conjunction with QuickBooks, uh, we do have uh, workflows set up with both of those uh, that we can discuss further. It won't be addressed in today's webinar, uh, but if it's something of interest and you know you're doing a lot of EDI orders with the big box retailers, 
uh, please let me know and we can talk offline about that as well. Uh, we do support e-commerce extensions. So what that is, is basically writing back to your shopping cart. Uh, if you're using a, a website today, uh, we have about 10 or so uh, different shopping carts and marketplaces we work with um, available for you. Um, and we can basically update that shopping cart with the orders being fulfilled uh, and also the tracking number along with Quick QuickBooks being updated as well. And then with the post office, we do support uh, discounted CPP pricing that you can benefit from. Uh, so if you are doing some with FedEx or UPS today with light weights, and I'll talk more about that where they're uh, more in line and maybe can offer some potential savings to you as well in a little bit. So as we get into some of the holiday stuff, uh, just a couple key uh, slides I have here to review. Um, but basically, we look at November, and November we're in kind of the right in the heart of things where people start begin, beginning to purchase um, for the holidays. So you can see here on the left, 36% uh, of, of the population starting to really uh, ramp up their purchasing um, behavior versus people who are just, you know, the researching side. But as we approach really the December, the first two weeks in December, you can kind of see that, you know, 27% and, you know, the per people researching goes down drastically from 33%. So, again, still at a high peak between now and the first two weeks in December. Um, so, again, this is kind of a good timing to learn a little bit more about how Starship can be potentially, you know, implemented in time to help streamline a lot of those orders that might be coming in. And then we talk about post-purchase experience. So what we find is, you know, talking to a lot of our merchants that are out there, uh, what they're hearing from their customers about what could be done better. Um, and this really comes, you know, from our partners that we work with on the post office side as well. But really three things that come to mind where we can try to help you um, is basically looking at faster delivery times. How do we accomplish that? How do we pick the right carrier, you know, in a multi-carrier solution like Starship every time? Uh, and then really communication. So obviously you, your customer, is gonna really wanna know where their shipment is at all time and how can we help you do that uh, with our application. So when we talk about you know, faster transit time, you know, really you're, you know, most of us are aware of what FedEx, UPS offer in their standard ground transit times. And we talk about you know, going across country um, from say East Coast to West Coast um, we're really looking at a five-day transit time where you're maybe forced to ship something as we get closer to the holidays, uh, two days or three-day air and spending astronomical, you know, charges to get those products to your customer. This is where we can, you know, utilize a, a partner like the post office, um, which basically utilizes their priority mail network to get there in, say, three days maximum around the country. So it speeds up the transit time. Uh, rather than having you open up another warehouse to cross, you know, the West Coast or East Coast, um, you know, you basically can take advantage of, you know, utilizing the post office for those particular shipments and getting those there quicker. Here you can see basically what's that going to do for your bottom line. It's really going to reduce your transportation costs. We see an average of, say, 15%, um, you know, across the board, you know, basing on UPS and FedEx data. Um, and it's also going to improve your transit time by 1.2 days, roughly, um, compared to what you see with FedEx or UPS utilizing their ground services. Also with the post office, you're going to benefit from that Monday through Saturday delivery service um, versus a standard, say, Monday through Friday or Tuesday through Saturday um, type of service that the other carriers may uh, offer. <clears throat> so we talked about multi-carrier success. Um, really what we see here, a study was done, 85% of the you know, retailers that are out there are basically using a single carrier shipping system. So, uh, you know, they're using the ship managers, they're using the world ship uh, platforms that are out there. Uh, and this is where we, you know, solutions like ours come into play where we can kind of help consolidate those. Um, so if you are doing, say, LTL on top of parcel, you're not having, say, five workstations come into play. It's really, you know, streamlining that into one consolidated system. You know, about 91% of the retailers, you know, they're shipping anywhere from 60 to you know, say 2,000 shipments a month, um, are basically, you know, use their current parcel systems for you know, four plus years. And that's pretty common in, in the shipping arena. Um, basically, you know, once someone has a loyalty to a carrier, uh, especially a good program put in place, you know, there's usually great loyalty there in the parcel side of things. Uh, but again, using a multi-carrier system may look at, 
you know, especially like our rate shop uh, platform that we have built in may give you kind of that um, view that you may never have had before that makes it simple to see, hey, UPS or post office or another carrier may be a better option to ship it to a particular client. And then basically 39% of the parcels shipped, you know, greater than 350 miles, you know, that's really kind of where, you know, post office might take in uh, and kind of be the sweet spot uh, for those uh, particular shipments that you might be doing as well. <clears throat> so basically we look at three different things when we talk about multi-carrier platforms, you know, technology that's seamless, you know, we believe that our integration with QuickBooks is very seamless. Uh, we utilize um, their SDK background that basically takes in all the information from QuickBooks, um, all the customer information, all the line item information, uh, and then brings that information back into QuickBooks once we ship and process. Um, clear business rules. We have freight rules as well as ship via rules built into our platform um, that allow you to set those based on customer name, based on um, maybe a rate shop scenario you want to set up, you know, choosing cheapest ground service to rate a shipment on. Uh, but you can also add additional uh, handling fees um, on top of shipments for a particular customer. So we have different rules that we can set um, to make sure that you know, you're not upside down on your shipping, but also makes the best sense for you to use that particular carrier in that regard. Uh, and then knowing your carrier strengths for your business. So this is gonna give you some insights with reporting, you know, kind of being able to have better negotiation power, um, but also giving you kind of that visibility you're gonna to need to see who's good at where, maybe FedEx is great in the Northeast, uh, maybe post office is great out West, or you know, specific LTL carrier might be best in the Midwest type of thing. So <clears throat> we talk about the post office a little bit, um, and really that's because, you know, obviously you can see here kind of what you know, is out there. Um, they become really the number one delivery partner for a lot of these big um, you know, players in, in the e-commerce space, you know, Amazon, the Ebays, the Jane.com, you know, so Etsy. So all the popular names that we all are familiar with, um, they're being utilized, and this is what made the post office kind of come out strong over the last several years with their reliability, with their tracking. Um, so again, this is kind of something we start looking at and talking to our customers about, but really where they're best used is when you're shipping direct to a consumer, um, kind of a household, uh, you're shipping parcels typically under five pounds, uh, we even talk about maybe even 20 pounds and under might be a better uh, suited for the post office as well. Uh, shipping small boxes that are sort of heavy, sort of like car parts, you know, replacement parts or tools. Um, and then delivering the places where UPS and FedEx have surcharges. Post office is known not to have any additional surcharges, so no residential, no fuel, uh, no, you know, fees to Alaska, Hawaii, things like that, where we can kind of, you know, utilize them. Uh, to keep those costs down for you. And then we talk about the reliability piece. Reliability is a big thing, especially when it comes to post office, because the big thing on the marketplace was, you know, not, you know, they don't have really great tracking, they don't have really great reliability, but because they partnered up with a lot of these big, you know, uh, folks out there in the marketplace, such as like the Amazons, um, they had to get really strong at what they did on the back end. So, you know, every shipment that goes out these days is, you know, they're having an average of eight different um, uh, uh, tracking requests that basically, you know, will let you know exactly where that shipment is along the way, you know, so you can go across the country, you're going to have, you know, eight different um, times where you're going to be able to see kind of exactly where it is in the country at any time. So again, they've gotten a lot better, you're going to have better visibility utilizing our platform, we're going to give you the tools that you're going to need to ensure your customer service team or sales team have those uh, you know, visibility into those shipments to keep your customers up to date. This is just to give you a little bit of visibility to different carts that we have you know, are working with today in the e-commerce world. The ones down below the line there you see are ones that we're currently testing and coming out with here in the near future. Um, so all the ones up top are ones out in the market and are working. Uh, Any one at the bottom will currently will have in the future release here very shortly. Uh, but again, we have the ability to integrate with these directly, but we also have the ability to integrate them, what we call an extension to QB, um, where basically we can update the cart along with your uh, QBE or QBO uh, platform you're working with. This is a list of carriers that we currently have um, out there. So we I guess I mentioned about two dozen different carrier integrations. Uh, the newest one that's on the slide is Worldwide Express 
being our second 3PL that we've incorporated. Um, and I'll show you kind of a little bit of a workflow with them, uh, what you can expect to see. But if you're using any of these carriers, by all means, let me know. Uh, or if you're not and you're using someone else, we also have a manual BOL in the LTL space that we can utilize uh, for those types of carriers where you can't get rating, but you can at least automate the BOL if you need to. And then uh, finally here, I'm on 18.1. Um, so we just came out with this a couple of weeks ago, kind of what's new. I just mentioned Worldwide Express. We're all excited here to kind of announce our second 3PL integration. Um, they're gonna give you, uh, they support up to 80 different LTL carriers currently. Um, so if you're a shipper who's not shipping, say, a lot of freight that you know maybe doesn't make sense for you to negotiate with a carrier directly, um, they're gonna be a great option for you to take advantage of. They'll customize a program for you specifically um, based on your lanes, your types of shipping, your, your type of uh, commodities you're shipping. Um, so that way you can benefit from some you know, uh, great incentives that they can provide to you. Uh, and then we'll incorporate that into the application in Starship so you can see those rates uh, in comparison to maybe a carrier you have a negotiated rate with, uh, for instance. And then uh, also we're excited here because we just uh, released our new web client um, you know, that's browser-based, uh, it's still an on-premise solution. Um, right now it's in its first CR state uh, and it's available for QBO customers only today. Uh, for QBE customers, uh, it is coming. Uh, we anticipate it being out sometime early Q1. Um, so stay tuned, uh, we'll have more around that in a future webinar kind of showcasing, but if you did decide to purchase our current client that I'm about to show, um, you always will have the capability of utilizing the web client when it does become available. So uh, it will utilize the same database, uh, so no worries there. And then it also have a new dashboard that we're gonna feature in there as well with heat maps, kind of showing you where uh, your shipments are going to, kind of utilizing it from a marketing perspective, just you know, making sure you're hitting you know, the country across the board. All right, so let me jump over to the demo here quickly and I'll show you the two uh, workflows I have put together. <clears throat> okay, so the first workflow I'm gonna take everyone through um, is really just our domestic workflow, um, you know, showing a parcel shipment. Um, so really this would be the user interface that you would be working in today or in the future, if you're not using it today, obviously. Um, but up in the upper left quadrant is where we're gonna be pulling your um, sales order, your sales invoice, or sales receipt from. So those are the different document types that we can pull from. So if you're utilizing any one of these, that's not an issue for us. I'm gonna be in sales orders today in my environment, so I'm gonna keep it there. We do have the capabilities of supporting multiple companies. Um, so if you do have multiple QuickBooks company files, we can support that as well. So you can toggle between different company files to pull in the right sales order. If you have your pick ticket, packing list, whatever you're using barcoded, um, we can scan that with a wedge type scanner to pull in the sales order information. Um, or you can use our lookup window here and simply just pull in the order number you're gonna be working with and all the information is gonna pre-populate in. Um, so that way you'll have all the information um, for, for the particular ship you need to ship out uh, currently. So you have all the ship via information comes in for you. So as long as the ship via field in QuickBooks is marked as UPS ground, um, that'll come in. Uh, it'll automatically default to billing prepaid unless if you uh, set it up to know that this particular customer is always a third party uh, um, uh, billing, uh, we can map to that as well. And we'll have you uh, set a specific account number uh, in QuickBooks that we can map to to pull in that particular information. It will default to a, your sender. We do support multiple sender IDs. So we can, if you're a drop shipper and you're wanting to show maybe your retailer or someone else you're shipping for, uh, you can do that as well. And we typically will map to the bill to section in QuickBooks. Um, so that way it can reflect the right sender information rather than yourself. And then the ship to information comes in as well. And we also do an address validation behind the scenes. Um, so that way uh, you can have, make sure that the address is correct from a street level, but also the zip code. And then also most importantly, the commercial uh, versus residential check. Uh, so this is being commercial. Uh, this is gonna avoid your address correction fees you might see with say UPS or FedEx on your invoices. Down at the bottom is where our line items are gonna come into play. Um, so these, I had two specific line items on my sales order in QuickBooks, my electrical cord and my anchor. Um, so I have these two items coming in. 
Uh, I have a couple different ways where I can pack these. I can just have everything come into one default box, which I have shown here, um, and then have your shipper come over here, add a carton, and move things around you know, as they see fit. Um, so basically they can come here and they can drag an item down into a box if they wanted to. And now if I open up these items here, you'll notice I have one item in one box, one item in another. Um, that can easily be done if you wanted to do it that way. You can simply leave it all in one box and add a carton without having a line item. Um, that's okay too, as long as we have a weight and dimensions of the second box. Or the third option is really using our packing scenario uh, in which we look at how many of a particular item do you have um, that could fit into one carton. Um, so we would look at that, we would set that at the item level. Um, so when we import that item, it would automatically create two boxes, for example, because we had you know, maybe three items and only two can fit in one box. Um, so therefore we're gonna create two boxes inside of Starship for you. Um, so when I look at the line items themselves, um, you'll notice we have some standard mappings that we do during implementation, um, all coming from QuickBooks. So this would be your QuickBooks item number, your descriptions coming in from QuickBooks, along with your values and weights. Um, if you're shipping LTL, um, you can store your NMFC number, you can store your class information here as well. Um, so that way you don't have to enter that every single time. Um, and then also you have the ability here to back order. I have two on this particular um, shipment that I need to ship, but if I only had one in stock, I can simply mark this as one, and now one will be back ordered. You can update the order on the back end in QuickBooks to either send out that order again or create a new order to ship out to your customer. Um, Starship does not have that logic built with QuickBooks to update your inventory inside of QuickBooks, unfortunately. So when we talk about rate shop, uh, we come into rate shop here and you'll always see the default being the ship via. So this would be your UPS ground will be shown here. Um, but if I'm curious to see what my you know, rates are gonna be, um, I can simply hit shop all and now it's gonna go out and hit each carrier's API and pull back the rates that I have licensed on my Starship license. So it won't show you all the carriers we work with. It's only gonna show you those few that you might have currently licensed, say your post office, FedEx, and UPS, for instance, uh, and show you what the least expensive option is going to be, along with the anticipated delivery time. <coughs> so as it finishes up here, um, and mine might take a minute or so since it's going through 20 carriers, but you can see here, it kind of comes up with the lowest and least amount. You can sort this by any of these column headers. So if you were to click on charges, you know, it'll, you know, change it from lowest to highest, highest to lowest. But you can see here that my UPS rate is fourth in line um, at $20.26. Uh, in this particular example, uh, but my post office rate is coming in at, say, $16.04. Um, so about $4 less expensive. Uh, it's also going to get there on Friday versus UPS going to get there on Tuesday if it's shipped out today. So this is sort of a no-brainer for me to kind of just take advantage of the post office rate. So if I wanted to do that, all I would have to do is simply click this little purple box. You'll notice it changes it over to my priority mail account that I've set up, and now I'm good to go and I can ship and process this order as well. To do that, I can just simply hit ship and process here or hit F5, and what I'll get here is basically two shipping labels with the post office, um, along with packing list. So we call this our smart label. We have a couple different options available. Um, you don't have to use this label stock. You can print both of these to a thermal printer. You can print one to a laser, one to a thermal, um, whatever you decide, or you can use your own packing list if you wanted to as well. But this would be a four by six die cut. You just peel right off, put on the box. This now becomes your packing list for box one with the item that you've uh, shipped in it. And then the second pat label print right behind it, um, that's gonna look like this. And then we'll have the second item in that box as well. And if you don't wanna have two packing lists, we also support a shipment packing list in which you can have one packing list for both boxes if you choose. So once I close that out, the write back will happen simultaneously into QuickBooks. So if I go ahead and pull up that order there, and there you can see it. Um, it'll mark it as a service as post office priority mail, the two tracking numbers, along with the freight charges associated to that shipment as well, is put back in real time for you. 
Okay, so I'm going to switch gears quickly here because uh, I do want to show you the uh, latest and greatest with Worldwide Express quickly. Um, so I'm just going to do the same thing um, on uh, pulling my order in that I was working in. So I'm just going to pull in this order here for LTL. So again, the workflow is exactly the same between LTL and Parcel. Um, so you can kind of get an idea. We'd show a pallet now because I have this coming in via RNL initially. Um, so you can see here I have one item on one box. It's going to be on a pallet. Um, at the item level, I mentioned before, we do store your NMFC and class information. Um, so you have that information there as well. <clears throat> on the rate shop, um, the one thing we've added, obviously, is the Worldwide Express piece. So now you can have a Worldwide Express custom program set, and you can also have a negotiated rate with that same carrier. Uh, in this instance, I have RNL. Um, so I'm going to kind of show you what that would look like. So if I hit Shop All, um, now it's going to go out right again all my licensed carriers. And what you can do in this situation is you can basically just have um, locate you know um, sort your carriers. Um, together, so that way you can see what your rate would be versus what the Worldwide Express rate would be potentially, um, and then make a decision from there which cost you want to use. So you can see here, if you just click on this, you'll notice all my RNL carriers are together. Here's my RNL carrier with Worldwide Express. That's $1,084 for this shipment, but then you can see what your RNL rate would be yourself, what you negotiated, would be $1,893. So obviously, I'm going to save myself about $800 on this shipment, but I, so I'm going to go ahead and choose to ship it with Worldwide Express. And when you do that, um, you'll basically generate a bill of lading, um, their bill of lading, that, or you can generate our bill of lading we offer. Um, if you use your own module, um, RNL does support utilizing their own bill of lading as well. So you have a couple bill of lading options available for LTL shipping. Um, but in this situation, I'm just going to leave it as is, and I'll show you what that looks like with the RNL side. Um, and then from there, you again, go ahead and ship and process. And then you'll get your bill lading with the commodities, the class information, um, all of that broken out for you. Um, and then also the nice thing about the RNL module is it will support uh, pro number generation. Um, so we'll put the pro number right on the bill lading. Worldwide Express, unfortunately, you will need this roll of stickers to be getting that pro number put back into Starship um, because they don't support the pro number generation through the 3PL uh, environment, unfortunately. So, uh, but with the Carrier Direct, we do support the pro number generation so you don't have to use the roll of labels if you don't want to. So as this basically goes out and sends the request out to RNL to be picked up, um, we'll also generate the BOL, as I mentioned from here. <clears throat> and then we'll have the write back occur all at the same time for you. And this is taking a minute here, and I'm not sure as to why. So we're going to jump over. I'll let that do its thing. I'll come back to that. There it goes. <clears throat> so here you can see the bill leading from RNL. You can see basically the pro number as well that we put on the bill leading. Um, and then all the information down below, the commodity information I just showed you, the pool cover, the single rope reel, the NMFC, the class, all of that is listed here. Um, again, the only difference from this to Worldwide Express is really they don't support the pro number here. You'd have to enter that manually uh, to get that to show up on the bill of lading. <clears throat> and then this would be our own bill of lading <clears throat> that you can use as well if you don't want to use theirs. Um, that's another option, same information. Um, the other one, obviously, a little more colorful, but uh, gives you the same concept here. <clears throat> and then once we come back into that sales order, so you can see here, shipped RNL puts the pro number back in, uh, also with the cost as well for the freight charges. And then also, just so you know, on the right back, we do support other options. So some customers do like the idea of having dimensions or just uh, weights. Um, be put back into QuickBooks. So we do offer different write back options. So if there is other information you're looking to have written back, that is supported as well. So I'm no running up against time here. So I'm going to kind of stop here. Um, and I do want to turn this open to some questions. So uh, let me just go back here and put my information up. 
um, so everyone can see. If you need to get a hold of me, um, there's my information. But I will also follow up after the webinar uh, with those of you interested. Before I do open it up to some questions, I'm going to open up a poll here quickly. So if you do want to just uh, answer, you know, a quick question of what you might be interested in, um, by all means, please feel free, and uh, we can go from there. So let me go launch that for us. Okay, so that's launched. And again, if you do have questions, please raise your hand, write your question in, and I'll be able to address as uh, many as I can here over the next few minutes. So first question that I have coming in um, is regarding actually EDI. Um, so does um, the Starship integrate directly with a true commerce or an SPS commerce, or does it integrate only with QuickBooks? Um, great question. So we don't integrate directly with those EDI platforms. Uh, the workflow with those platforms uh, flow through QuickBooks, and we pull the sales order or sales invoice um, from QuickBooks that they've created. And then we basically create an XML document or a file um, that will contain a tracking number, how you packed your items and what boxes or pallets. And we send that back off to the trade or off to the EDI provider who will then send that information back to your trading partner to close out the PO. Great question. <clears throat> Do we have any additional questions? All right. <clears throat> Give it another minute for the poll for uh, everyone to uh, see what we're doing there. Give it another 30 seconds or so, and if you, again, do you have any questions, but I'll follow up with everyone to see if we can uh, address anything you might be looking for in the uh, application here. So one other question, uh, how is Starship priced in comparison to Shipgear? Um, Starship basically is a perpetual license, uh, so you do have an upfront cost associated with uh, Starship. Um, and then it's a one-time fee, and you have an annual maintenance that is based on 17% um, of your total licensing fees uh, with Starship. So there's no monthly fees, there's no transactional fees, it's just a one-time upfront cost, and then each year you'll be billed accordingly. All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close the poll down. Um, so thanks for those who voted. Um, and I'm going to close out today's webinar, but I do appreciate everyone jumping on um, the webinar today. And like I said, I will follow up with everyone, but please feel free to reach out if I don't get to you uh, here the next day or two and um, ask your questions as you see uh, fit. But again, appreciate the time and we'll talk to you all soon. Have a great rest of your day.